Today I have six fall to Halloween transitional decor DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. Today is part of a quick change collaboration with Teresa B. DIY and two wonderful sets of co-hosts. We're going to start off with some scrap ribbon. These are just pieces I had left over from last year and some from this year. I'm going to use some fastener dots or some Velcro pieces. I have some thrifted, this is like burlap with lace on the other side. I think it's a table runner. And then I got this from the thrift store as well, but it originally looks like came from Target. You can use any pumpkin farm you want for this, especially if it has little cut out eyes. So I'm just going to lay it down here. I'm going to cut off some excess to make it a little more manageable. Then what you won't see is me chasing it, tracing it out with a marker and then just trimming it down as close as I can to the form. Voila, there we go. I want my burlap side to show through his eyes and the alternate side is going to be this pretty lace. So I'm going to protect my fingers, go around with my glue gun excuse my face in the picture here we're gonna go all the way around and I'm just gonna do it on the edges because I don't want any bubbles wrinkles problems of any sort and this seems to be the easiest way to do it just around the edge attaching it down if you have any extras just go ahead with your scissors and trim it make it look very neat we always strive for a high-end look so let's clean it up where we can so now we have two sides one side is going to be for Halloween and we're going to use these little velcro dots be sure you clean your surface just like it says i found that alcohol and a paper towel work great for this you can go ahead and take your two dots i always like to put the prickly part of my velcro downward just so i remember where they are and that's going to be important in some crafts that we're going to do shortly so just keep that in mind i'm going to go ahead and put those together and just press them down on the stem of that pumpkin they are adhesive, you don't necessarily have to, to use the uh, glue, but if you use a heavy bow or a larger bow, it's gonna pull down and it may take it off of your surface. So just for a little extra safety there. Now I'm gonna show you this fairly easy bow. This is what Ramon at home calls a funky bow. I am using two feet of each one of these ribbons, so 24 inches. And these are just my little scraps I showed you. I'm going to fold them in half. They're already dovetailed and I'm going to pinch them in the middle and kind of pleat them together. Hold them between my thumb and my uh, forefinger there. Hold them tightly together once you get them pinched off. Just see what I'm doing. Struggling here. There's always a struggle. This one was kind of wrinkled so I was trying to work with the wire there. It's kind of flimsy, that, that ribbon. Now, the orange and white is a very good quality ribbon. It really holds its shape nicely. But I'm going to do what I can with that checked ribbon because I really wanted to use it in this project. Now, onto the handy dandy zip ties. Love these. I'm going to just cinch them around right in that center where I was holding them. I'm making sure that my bows are the same, my loops are the same height there before I fasten it all the way down. Then I'm going to cut it off. Trim down my little extra here. This one I didn't didn't cut. Okay, and so now you can fluff this mess of a bow out. It looks kind of wild in the beginning. You may question your choices, um, but I assure you it will look better. So you're going to pull things apart. I'm showing you at normal speed for a moment. Just pulling apart separating my colors so that I don't have two patterns right next to each other. That's the goal anyway. And then you're gonna start pulling the little ends upward. Pull them upward into the bow. So they're gonna essentially form the base. So imagine that those loops are the flower and all these little tails are the leaves. So you want these leaves to go out beside your flower, right? That's what we wanna do. Sometimes these fabric pieces of ribbon will fray. You can leave it that way or you can trim it up to make it look really pretty. Okay, so now that you don't have to see all of my fluffing, because I can go on and on and on with this, I put it in a quicker speed for you, but you get the idea. You want to just kind of twist and turn and fluff. Separate your patterns as best you can, and when you get it the way you like it, I'm just going to add a little glue here. 
so that I can get a good strong hold with my bow onto the fasteners. I'm gonna press down to make sure it goes through the fabric of the bow. I got glue on my table. Okay, so now you can curve down or pull straight out on your little wired ribbon. And if I didn't say that before, you definitely need a wired ribbon for this bow. But it's a great way to use your scraps, right? So now my cute little pumpkin has a little headdress. I'm gonna add a little more to it, of course. So I'm gonna take some of these blackberries and some of these orange berries that came from the Dollar Tree. I'm calling them berries, I'm not sure what it says on the pack, but that's what they look like. So you can just pull those apart easily, they're just wound together. And I'm gonna do some alternating picks of two orange and one black, and then two blacks and one orange. You can just twist those around each other and then bend the ends up and it makes a good surface for you to add your glue so you can press them down into your either into the bow or wherever you want to put yours i always like to remind people when you come over to watch my videos that what i do is for inspiration you don't necessarily have to do it the same way i do certainly if you don't like the technique or you don't like what i'm doing you don't have to i just share this for inspiration so we're going to continue around here just like that and there you go I'm only going to use four of these now I want to add a little more something to the top it feels like it's too heavy in the center I'm going to kind of broaden out the bow just a little bit by adding two of these orange leaves they, they kind of coordinate somewhere between the color of the pumpkin and the color in my ribbon because they are not exactly the same but that's okay that is okay any kind of orange works for fall and Halloween, right? So put these in wherever it's pleasing to your eye, wherever you like it, whatever brings you some joy. That's what this crafting journey is all about, right? Finding some joy, sharing, inspiring other people. So there we go. And I'm going to add one more just in the bottom here. Just like that. Okay. So there we go so far, what do you think? Yes, I think she's very pretty. She's looking great, ready for Halloween and happy about it. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the reverse side. So because we have those little glue dots, it's very easy to take that bow off and set it aside. We're gonna flip it over and start working on our fall side. Now the fall can be used early harvest and then you can use it for Halloween. Then you can flip it back around and use it all the way up until Thanksgiving. That's my idea. Okay, so same process with that glue dot. We're gonna stick them together and then stick them down. I've got some burlap leaves and another scrap of ribbon, this beautiful, beautiful ribbon. I'm so sad I'm running out of it. And it came from Dollar Tree. It's just absolutely stunning. It has like a coppery color edge on it it's really nice it's also a wired ribbon I'm gonna do two feet or 24 inches go down cut that off I'm gonna dovetail it just like the other one and then I'm gonna make the simplest boat ever for this side certainly when you finish your pumpkin you could definitely go on to use this side for anything you want any type of bow, you don't have to put a bow, you can put a beautiful spray or swag across the top, anything that you choose. Very simple bow, and then I'm gonna tie it in the center with a piece of jute. Just like that, always a double knot. We don't want it to come apart because if you are a aggressive bow fluffer like I am, you wanna be sure that you're not going to pull the bow completely apart. I'm a busy mama. I have little kids in my house, so I need to be sure that I save time where I can. And that's a good way to assure that I am using my time properly and I don't have to go back and redo anything. I don't have to. So you see the back of these burlap leaves have a wire on them already. You can twist them together and then it's to add a little bit of glue. 
just like that and it will secure them together nicely you can also if you don't intend to give any dimension or fluff on those leaves you can just pull those wires off easily on the back I'm gonna trim off this because I'm not gonna need it to tie anything we have our glue dots I like the way that's gonna look so I'm gonna add a little bit of glue there and attach those together just like so a little more glue is gonna attach it right onto the bow Hey, if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you're new here, I would love to have you as part of my YouTube family. Okay, so again, because I had to flip my bow over, it smushed down just a little bit. I'm going to fix it just a tad. You can curl those edges or tails of the bow under with your fingers if you would like. Or when you have wire, you also have the ability to just let them lay out straight. Whichever way you choose is great. Now they're even. And this is so simple. This side is so much easier. Excuse my head. I stand up sometimes to do my uh, projects, especially when I have larger pieces like this, and I need to be able to get a better view for you guys. So I stand up, and sometimes my head gets in the way of the camera. Okay, there we go. Now, we're gonna add one more bit. And this is a pack of three that you can get from Dollar Tree. I got them early in the season, so you know they, they may be out, so you can use something else. I just stippled on a little bit of this copper paint. I used two coats and let it dry. And now, we are gonna add it on to the sign. You have to work very quickly when you're using hot glue and metal because it dries so fast, it'll try to pop off. So I've went ahead and put it exactly where I want it, and I'm just pulling it up on the edges, right around the thickest parts of that metal so that I can glue it down. If you want something that's gonna be permanent, you can go ahead and add some super glue or anything like that. You can use Gorilla Glue in your hot glue gun, and that'll hold it for a long time. Best thing about this is, you can't see the glue strings. So if you make a little bit of a mess, you're not gonna see it on that pattern. What do you think? There's our harvest pumpkin. And coming up next, there's the Halloween pumpkin. All right. I like them both and I will be using both of these in my home for sure. Give me a thumbs up if you like these. <laughs> she's a beauty she knows it she's confident okay on to the next one we're going to use some clings from Dollar Tree I've got some of these little thrifted and dollar spot wooden pumpkins they're also adhesive on the back I've got some wood cutouts from Dollar Tree some of these trim stickers from Dollar Tree this is a thrifted pack of paper so you use whatever kind you like but I'm going to use a pack of Halloween paper for our Halloween side and then on the other side I'm gonna use some of these tiles I got these at the thrift store I'm gonna take a Dollar Tree sign here you go you can find these in any pattern that you like but I found that the plaid or the checked one is going to be a little more versatile for what I want I'm also gonna use the little glue dots or the little uh, velcro dots again for this project and I've chosen this paper with the spider ribs on it. I think the dimensions of this paper happen to be pretty good, except we're gonna trim down a little bit on the end. So I've just marked it with a pencil. I'm gonna use my ruler to get a straight line here. I'm gonna mark it, and then I'm going to cut off the excess. Trimmy trim trim. All right, we're gonna save our scrap, of course, because what are we? We're crafters, and we're thrifty crafters. Now. I know this is the right size, so I'm just going to lay this down, use my little cutting tool from Dollar Tree, go right over the top of that cork to cut out another piece. And we're cutting out the fall side. So we've already got our Halloween backing and we're cutting out our fall backing. And look how easily this just snaps off. Perfect. You can get your cork paper. It is already adhesive at the Dollar Tree. You can look and find it in the Crafter Square, I do believe. 
Now since my cardstock is a little thin and I want to have a little more dimension, I'm just using a scrap of this foam board that I already had. You can see I've done many, many projects on this board. And then I'm going to just cut out that rectangle and use my glue stick and place that glue all the way around, especially you know around the edges and corners. We want it to be even. My lines are not exactly straight here, and that's okay because I've got something else I'm gonna do that's gonna make it look a little less noticeable. So here's the back, and I'm just gonna use my sanding block and just sand down that cork a little bit to make my lines nice and straight. Just like that, and that's perfect. I'm definitely gonna have to work with this cork a little bit more on further projects, because I'm really liking it. Love the texture of it. So we have our Halloween and our fall sides. Now, we're gonna go back to the Halloween side and decide what we wanna do here to decorate this piece. I know I love these little spooky ghost signs. It's so cute, it doesn't look spooky at all, which is the best part. And I'm just choosing the one that has what I think is the best surface. And I'm going to be doing a little bit of a dry brush. It's a really light brush, I guess you would say. This is my linen white chalk paint. I'm just gonna dab it in the paint on the lid there and then on the paper towel and then brushing up and down lightly and quickly all over the little sign. This is gonna dry very quickly as well, but I will set it aside and let it do its thing while we work on the background. So I'm deciding which one of these I wanna use. And I think the thinner one is gonna be the better one since the little cutout is so thick and so um, it's gonna take up so much room here. We're just gonna use these to trim this out. Okay, so we're gonna go up here and trim out the bottom. What I'm doing is just eyeballing so that I know it's got a sticker or clear backing on it. So you can go over your edge just a little bit. So I'm just very slowly eyeballing it and then I'm pressing it down and not pressing on the area that's overhanging the edge. It's gonna give it, you can see there, it gives it a trim beyond the paper, an edge beyond the paper, I guess you could say. And that's what I wanted to do because I want to mask the fact that we have some edges that are not exactly even. I'm gonna go down here and do the same exact thing. You can cut these and you can remove any little pieces of beading that you want to. So since I already had those really thick beads on the end, I'm just gonna cut out that thickest bead and then start with the thinner section. I'm just explaining to you what I'm doing, but you certainly do not have to do it this way. But this makes a nice fit and I think it, um, it makes it look like it's one piece and I like that. Doing the same thing here and putting it down on this edge. Probably too much conversation and too much talk about trim work, right? But just so you can understand my insanity, there we go. See there, it goes over the edges and it almost looks like a different edge. I'm gonna take my black furniture repair marker, use whatever you have, you can even use chalkboard paint here, and I'm gonna color over all of the white. I'm coloring right onto foam. This is a really good marker, but because I'm coloring on foam, it's, it, you know, you know. Okay, crafter struggles. There we go. We're almost done. And there we go. Okay, so follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. We're gonna use these foam squares, which can be trimmed up to any size you like. You can see me doing that here. You can use foam dots, whatever you have. You can definitely get this sort of thing at Dollar Tree. I already had these in my stash. I'm gonna put these pieces on the thickest parts of here so that you don't necessarily see it. It's not gonna stick out. It's gonna be invisible in the back. I always like to give my, pro my projects a little bit of dimension and the fact that this is going to overlap that border that we put on, I felt like it needed to be raised up a bit. And so that's what we're doing. You can trim these down any way you want to. You can use something else, but to me, this works great. I love these little sticky squares. All right, I'm just finding my space here and then pressing it down when it's in the right spot. And you can see that the top of the ghost head and the bottom of the letters do overlap. 
so you know what's going on there. Okay, now we're going to work on the fall side. These adorable little stickers, they are wall window clings and they are so good. They have so many options um, and they were going to fit on this space. So I'm just trying to decide which one I want and then I was like, oh wait a minute, I can combine these. So I'm going to use my pumpkin tag from the bottom or my little pumpkin um, adhesive, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to cut down a piece of cardboard paper because it's sheer and I want to be able to make it look white. So I'm going to use a scrap of this cardboard or poster board and put this on here. I'm going to use my little tool, which also, by the way, came from the Dollar Tree. And I'm very happy with it. It fits nicely in my little hands and it works great for what I use it for. Trim this out without cutting off your line. I did kind of bump my corners a little bit, but I don't think it's that noticeable. We all know how to cut. You certainly can use a cutting board or whatever cutting tool you prefer. A little rotary blade. All right, so I know I wanna put this on the bottom and I know I wanna add some pumpkins to it. We wanna make this a pumpkin patch. So I'm gonna use a whole bunch of these dots. These actually came with the cork board. So I'm gonna use these to see how they work. And I'm going to layer these up three high. So right now we have one. I'm gonna need some room to put the pumpkins behind it. So I'm gonna make it three thick. There we go, second layer is down. Here's the third, right on top. Now this is gonna give us enough space that we can tuck in those little wooden stickers just like that. So right now, nothing is pressed down. I'm trying to get my placement, decide what colors and what shapes I won't wear. So that's what I'm doing. You can use the little cardstock. You can use any type of regular stickers. You can do some cutouts. You can do anything you like here, but I think pretty much you can find these stickers at Target Dollar Spot every year or Bullseye's Playground. What do you think about that? That is so cute. All right, so now we have to find some way to stick our two signs down on our, the little Dollar Tree sign back there. And we're gonna use the glue dots. Now, again, we're going to make sure that the prickly side is down. That's gonna go down first. Okay, I've already got my pieces together, prickly side down, and the soft side is facing upward. Now you can use a little hot glue if you would like, and then you're gonna position it in the center, and then you can press it down. Now the reason we had the prickly side down is because the soft side is going to be on the spooky side, and on the fall side and we want it to be able to stick down to the original four that are already on the sign that's how we're going to remove them and make them interchangeable this is a quick change collab so this is this is what we do this is how we do it you can take this off i'm just securing my corners to make sure nothing comes loose and it worked great and then here we are with our fall sign what do you think yeah i like this i like this a lot Have you guys ever considered that you could use a coloring book with sayings and pretty designs to color your pictures, maybe with markers, and then put some type of a, a thicker something behind it? And then you can make your own little cutouts. All right, third project. I'm going to use this little squatty candle stand. I'm going to use a Halloween sign from Target and a pumpkin patch sign from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to use some of these ornaments from Dollar Tree. I've got some picks from Dollar Tree. These are just some little random pieces of sticks and bobs from my collection. And then I'm going to use three of these, whatever these are, fall rounds with leaves on them. I've cut my floral foam ball in half and I'm putting it right in the center. 
I'm going to take my first ring and put it down. I'm going to push my leaves outward as much as possible. Make sure that it's nice and even. We're not gluing this down. You don't even have to glue it. You can change it for another time. Now we've got to find some way to put our signs down in here. I'm going to use this little stick. You can use a popsicle stick, anything you want to use to make a standing or a pick sign out of these signs. I'm going to use scrap of ribbon from a project we did earlier. I'm going to cut these pieces off because we're going to need a little extra something something to hold this down to secure it. I'm going to use my glue gun. Press this down. Try to get it centered because I did not have it centered the first time. I'm going to put a little glue over the top and then a little piece of this ribbon. If you don't have scraps of ribbon, you can use a piece of scrap paper that you have to help hold it in place. And there you go. Welcome to our haunted house. I'm going to put it aside and let it dry. I'm going to work on this one. Because this sign is heavier, I'm going to use a dowel rod, a little piece that I have here. I think it came in a popsicle or cake pop kit or something like that. You gotta think outside the box. Set it aside, let that glue set up nicely. We're gonna start with our Halloween side first. You can take the little hangers off of these balls here. And there's glittery ones, there's shiny ones, and the mat. I decided to use the mat. These little sticks will fit down in here. Make sure that you find the right sticks to fit in there. Clip them down if you want to. And then you're gonna be hot glued them, of course. For the next ring, we're gonna cut an inch section out, remove it, overlap it about a half an inch, and then we're going to have our next layer. You're gonna press those together, and you're just gonna hold them there, and you can clamp them down, just like that, until the glue sets up. It'll kind of melt, it'll kind of, you know, do its thing, and you'll have a different diameter to go on top. So you can stack it on top. All right, so here we are stacking the next one. So now you can see that it's kind of tiered. And again, we're not gluing that. We're not gonna glue that down, it's not necessary. For the third one, we're gonna use pieces. We're gonna cut them off and we're gonna just hot glue around the top until it's almost completely covered. As you can see here, part of my footage did not make it. But you get the idea. You're gluing it down just like that. A little hot glue on the back and putting it down. Just like that. You don't want to press it flat. We want to give a little, leave a little height in there. Then we're going to press our pick down in there. And you can start using some of these little ornament picks that we made. You can just press them down wherever you like. You can press them under your layers if you want, but I just wanted to add the decorative pieces mainly on the top because it makes it easier to be removed because we are going to be taking these out to change it over to our fall version of this little, I don't know what you want to call this. What, what would you call this? Because we don't have a candle on it, so we actually couldn't call it that. I'm going to do some in the back too to cover it up. If you want to use something to cover up your ribbon back there, you can certainly do that. You can paint the back. You can add another piece of paper on the top of it. But just, um, you know, for your finished look, you need to do that. But I was just trying to get this project done for you to give you the idea. So there you go. You would want to do something with the back, obviously. That's not pretty. And this is what our Halloween side would be. All right, and also I uh, wanted to add, if you're gonna use glue, use a little bit of glue on your little decorative pieces that you add. Just a little bit, because you're gonna wanna remove them. This is what that is going to look like, if you can see it like that. And then we're gonna pull it apart. So here we go, taking out all the excess, leaving our basic bottom there. So we still have our foam and we still have all of our leaves are still on there. Now we're going to go and add the fall pick. I'm going to press that down there, try to make it kind of flat onto the leaves, and start adding in some simple greenery. The greenery does not have to be glued, and if you do glue it, you want to use a tiny bit of glue, not much at all. These are just some scrap pieces that I had left over. You can certainly do something that's a little more symmetrical if you choose. Whatever you like, that's what you want to put in yours. I'm 
gonna use little orange pieces and I have a little, just a little random, I think it's a mom. Thank you so much, Teresa, for this wonderful idea. And I'm so glad to have been part of it with you guys. Come back and see me again soon. Bye.